Okay, we are here with Dave Meekoff, and, and Dave, I have to tell you, I, I was just over talking to a canoe manufacturer, I said, we have to look at this, we have to look at this unit, so can you explain to us, I mean, just, it's like, wow, okay, I'm looking at some things. Sure. So can you explain to us what we're, what we're looking at here, what you do, and... Uh, yeah, sure. About five years ago, I had my motor home, and I started renting it out, and it kind of went boom, and we kept buying motor homes. Then I started following people on the YouTube that do overlanding, so I bought a Jeep with the rooftop tent, and we rent that out, 125 bucks a night, and then I got the trailer because it's a you want a place to actually hang out. Yeah. So that's um, uh, we're renting that out at 125 bucks a night. Things just kind of grew. Let's let's come over here if we can. What's what's the advantage to camping, uh, putting a tent on top of your vehicle as opposed to putting a tent on the ground? I mean, what what is uh, what do we? I mean, what? Yeah, so what you see here pops up in literally a couple of minutes. So this is like a clamshell design. The ladder folds up and the, you take these um, rods out. It just folds up. You throw a tarp over it and you're all set. And so you can park anywhere where it's rocky or wet or whatever. You just park and it pops right up and it's a real quick setup. And you're off the ground. You know, you're not getting wet. It's got a mattress, so it's comfy. Hi, Lorraine. Uh, can you tell us what, uh, what, what, we're, what we're looking at here? Sure. I'm an author and adventurer. I've completed three 1,000-mile adventures exploring our magnificent Great Lakes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell us a little bit about that. Well, my first adventure was to hike all the way around Lake Michigan. It's been my favorite place, and I decided to get to know it step by step. That's fantastic. And you're, you're an author. Uh, can you share a little, a couple of things about your books, the titles and things like that? Sure. Yeah, the first book is A Thousand Mile Walk on the Beach. The second one is A Thousand Mile Great Lakes Walk. And then A Thousand Mile Great Lakes Island Adventure. So there's a trilogy exploring the Great Lakes Basin. That's really interesting. And, uh, and is this which one was your latest book? The Island Adventure. And where do we find that at? Yeah, you can find it as an audio book at Audible or uh, at local independent bookstores. Okay, is there a website that you have that too? Yes, I do. Laketrek.com. Laketrek.com. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Lorraine. It was a pleasure meeting you. Have a great show. Okay. Okay, we're here with Ian Deming. Ian, uh, I, I'm, I'm just admiring these boats here, these uh, these handcrafted, uh, beautiful wooden boats. Can you tell us a little bit about it? And by the way, paddles as well. Can you tell us a little bit about all this and how this started? This is a, these are products of Mackinac Watercraft. It's actually my dad's business. He's the, he's the main builder. So he started the business about 20 years ago, and it's kind of taken off uh, from there. But building custom wood strip kayaks and canoes, uh, as well as paddles and, uh, and some other little odds and trinkets there. But now, do you do you assist him? Do you help him build these? Well, he's my dad, so I've assisted in, in a lot of them, whether I wanted he to makes or you not, right. whether I wanted to or not. <laughs> but I, for the most part, it's him. It's him. So this is his handiwork. How do I mean, so these are these are there forms that go along just like a traditional? If you were going to build a uh, out of a polymer uh, type of boat, there are forms and things. Or how does this work? There is that's the first step in the process is building a good strong back uh, to get the frame and the the right water lines, if you will, and then you can start building the putting the wood strips together around it after that they're fiberglassed inside and outside and that's what really gives them their strength because uh, if you touch them they're incredibly thin but this is what we're looking at well, this is what we're seeing right here if uh, Mike you can come in so here and you can see a little bit of this um, this this fabric and this is a mesh am I right what kind of well it's a it's a fiberglass so it starts as a cloth and then uh, by adding epoxy resin to it it hardens and becomes incredibly strong but also lightweight at the same time so compared to a plastic boat of the same length this will be about 40 percent of that weight okay it's great to see you again we we, we met uh, these folks in the hotel last night where we're staying and uh, they said they were musicians and by golly they are musicians <laughs> <laughs> you and didn't you, believe us? You guys are fantastic, <laughs> you know. I mean, everybody says, well, I, I, I sing, you know. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> but, but no, you guys are really phenomenal. Thank you. I mean, really Thank a great you. pair. Are you, okay, you're related somehow? <laughs> we mean, were asked that or earlier. Or just friends or <laughs> musician? We just were, related, we're kindred spirits is what we are. Yeah, we both live in Nashville, Tennessee. 
and we're both singer-songwriters. She's also, in addition to being a wonderful singer-songwriter, a great fiddle player, and she's also an outdoors person with her kayaking, and yeah, and I'm taking her in the Boundary Waters uh, this summer, so sh this is where she belongs. Yes, and that's... And I belong here, too, as well, so... That's yeah. great. That's our, that's our story, yeah. Well, that's fantastic, and you're, so you're both outdoors, obviously, yeah, and yeah. that and you, you, you belong here. I mean, this is exactly... Yes. So, and you're from Tennessee. Where in Tennessee? Originally Seattle, but I moved to Nashville, Tennessee, about 17 years ago. So it took me that long to go from being a classical violin geek to being a country country player. <laughs> what what made you change? And I'm, I'm a former musician as well. For, for like, I, yes. you know, I, but you say you never quit, so you never really quit. But yeah. So what what made you say, hey, I want to be, you know, I want to I want to get away from this genre, this type of music, and play this kind. What how, what was that about? Oh, let me tell you. And I'll try to make it short, but this is this is this is my favorite. Okay, so being the classical geek, being classically trained violinist from age four all the way up, competing to college, always in orchestras, wearing the same thing, playing the same thing on the page, competing for the same chair as everybody, pushing up our glasses at the same time, and and I got a hold of a Dixie Chicks Dixie Chicks record and a Dave Matthews Band record when I was in college, and I said that's it. I said I can wear what I want, I can play what I want, I can be the only one up there and have all the attention <laughs> and I quit and drove from Seattle down to Nashville in 2001 I think it was that is quite a story and good for you fantastic can I brag on her a minute oh, of course okay she didn't stop there okay <laughs> for seven years she was Taylor Swift's fiddle player okay is that a fact and I'm not stopping here then she toured worldwide for a year with Shakira and before that some guy named Ringo Starr at her had her, toured with her I've so heard of him. Yeah, with me. he was in he was in some other band, but I'm too young to remember them. But um, <laughs> yeah, so she's magnificent on all levels. Even when the tent leaks, I can't stop grinning. I'm his princess, and that's all right with me. Cause I'm canoeing with the and it's just like when he hands me my pal. And we're here with Scott Petrich. Scott, uh, can you explain a little bit about what we're looking at here? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll pop up a little bit. Take a look at this. So we've got a sail up. We've got a sail up here, and we've got a board. Yep. Uh, I'm here representing the uh, Michigan State University Sailing Center. So we're located on Lake Lansing. Uh, we offer uh, rentals for the public. We also have learn to sail classes, uh, and then memberships as well. So you can get a membership with us, and you can get out sailing, canoeing, paddling with your family uh, all summer long. So. Okay, and this is, okay, now it just goes, is there a certain month that you cut off that we kind of stop because of sure. weather? It's uh, basically May 1st through October 1st. Okay, so. okay. and in sailing. Now, do you, I was in Mexico okay. about three weeks ago in return. Jealous. I was there for a week. <laughs> and it was wonderful. Um, and we were out on this thing called a Hobie Cat. Sure. You, yeah, I love Hobie Cats. Um, unfortunately, we do not have Hobie Cats. Uh, Lake Lansing is a little too small, uh, and they actually take up a lot of space, and we have kind of a small footprint. But uh, we do have some really cool new boats we're getting this summer. Uh, we have an RS Quest, which you see up here. Uh, really modern sailing dinghy. Uh, great for a number of adults or a family to go out on. So we're really excited about that. And then um, also some new Zim 420s, which is more of a collegiate racing boat. So we have kind of some high performance boats that you can take out uh, and kind of like a wide range, uh, pretty neat fleet. Hey, we're here with Tim Steele. Tim, can you explain a little bit about what's going on here? So we're here on behalf of the Michigan Crossroads Council with the Scouts BSA. Um, we have a lot of high adventure opportunities that we're making available here, as well as resident camp opportunities for boys and now girls in the Scouts. Um, we have Camp Rotary here, which is in Clare, Michigan, about an hour and a half north of here. Uh, Cole Canoe Base is in Skidway Lake, which is not far out of West Branch, Houghton Lake kind of way. Uh, and then over here on the right, we have the Great Lakes Retriever, which is a 52-foot sailboat uh, where we run a live aboard program for groups of up to 12, where uh, the kids learn to sail the boats and uh, navigate, and sometimes they'll participate in the off race around Mackinac Island if the time allows. Um, it's a really interesting program and has received a good deal of national attention. Um, we were published in Scouting Magazine a couple of times here, and uh, you know we're, we're already booking out uh, a couple of years ahead now, but just happy to be here and to offer the opportunity for young people in the state of Michigan to get outside and uh, 
Enjoy the outdoors. Yes. Okay, we're here with Susanna Wagner of the Lansing Sailing Club. And, and Susanna, can you tell us a little bit about what you do here? So we're a uh, medium-sized sailing club in mid-Michigan on Lake Lansing. We're a nonprofit sailing club, all volunteer-based. And we're a group of people who have a great passion for sailing and sharing that love with other people, teaching people how to sail, how to how to race, how to be really good sailors, how to have fun on the water, and um, from young ages all the way up to as old as you want to get, sailing is a great sport. Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. I went and little, did a little sailing, uh, as I was just telling a gentleman earlier, in uh, Cancun on a uh, Hobie Cat. You yeah, know, yeah. Hobie Cat is oh, uh, the, like the wave. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I had knew nothing about this boat. When we got out there, we were just... I was, I would call it ripping, you know, swam, and I'm like, wow, this thing is, maybe it just seems like we're going that fast, but we really were. Yeah, it, it's... I mean, how fast are those, I, I don't, I didn't ask him how fast we might be going. You know, the, the interesting thing about sailboats is that it's the the fastest slow you can go. What is that, what does that mean, fastest slow? So you could be on a sailboat that's going, like, seven knots, you know, so maybe that's... What, and what is that, like eight miles an hour? It's about seven or eight miles. Yeah. And because you're close to the water, the smaller the boat is, right? So if you're on a boat like this, and you're sitting right here, you're like, you know, three inches off the water, hanging off, hanging off the side, it feels like you're going 20 miles an hour because you've got the wind, you've got the sound, you know, you buckets of water, you know, splashing past you. Certainly. And we've had people out for a, a, their, their first sail on a boat like this. And they come back and they're like, "Wow, I was I was going about one one gal. She says I'm going 30 miles an hour out there. I, I can't believe that was crazy." Okay, we've got David and Patty from Solar Outdoors. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit about what we uh, what we're looking at here? We are a social club based out of uh, Southeast Michigan, Livonia area, and we do uh, we do uh, trips, uh, backpacking, hiking, biking, that type of thing. Uh, do a little bit of knowledge sharing. So. Uh, try to help people learn about gear and, and things of that nature. Now, this is for is this for youth or is this for anyone? For anyone. Uh, our membership is more in the over 50s, but we are expanding and we, we love everyone. That's great. And, and, and again, you're located where again? Uh, Southeast Michigan, our membership is. We meet in Livonia once a month. And is, and is this, how much does this cost to you? Our membership is $40 a year. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to be a member to come to our meetings or to check us out. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I appreciate it, and uh, nice talking with you, and yep, have a great you. show. All right, yep. thank you. Okay, we've got Darlene Patterson here. Darlene, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. All right, great. I can say this morning because it's, so, it's, yeah. it's 10.30 in my time. I had lunch, though. Does that count? Did you? I have. <laughs> I had nothing yet, so <laughs> yeah, that's just like I'm starving now that I hear that. So what have we here? Just, uh, give us a little explanation of what... Uh, well, Meg and I are two people who paddled the Northern Forest Canoe Trail last summer, the whole all 740 miles in an integrated style. So we tried really hard to always be going downstream and not have to do it any any portaging upstream. There was plenty of portaging, but mostly we were able to travel going in, of course, downstream. Yes. Yep. And just promoting, trying to get other people to be as crazy as we are. No. Yeah, so our program is called Two Chicks and a Guy. Two Chicks and a Guy. That's the name of our program today. That's fantastic. I love it. We're here with Trey Rouse. And uh, Trey, what, your, your company is Great Lakes Sea Kayak Symposium. And can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Sure. So our company is actually The Power of Water. And we're a shop and a teaching uh, facility based in Lansing. We also run and are the organizers for the Great Lakes Sea Kayak Symposium, which is a uh, uh, sea kayaking event that occurs up in Grand Marais on Lake Superior for all levels of paddlers paddling and learning at Picture Drops. That's fantastic. And so, are there any any things that uh, like events that you do special throughout the year, like some sort of a, uh, a week where you do something different out of the ordinary, or is it pretty much the same year round or throughout the throughout the summer? Uh, I mean, we do lots of coach adventure travel. And so we just got back from a trip down to northern Florida. We're headed to Ireland in May. We go to Rhode Island. We do whitewater trips down in Pennsylvania, uh, Tybee Island, Georgia, uh, the Great Lakes Sea Kayak Symposium, all kinds of stuff. That's kind of what we're about is being on the water teaching all over the country and, and a little bit in Ireland as well. That's fantastic. In Ireland, that, that has to be a lot of fun. I mean, what, 
Yeah. yeah, it's absolutely amazing. It's a magical place to paddle, for sure. That's pretty wild. Great to hear. Is there a website you'd like to share with us? Sure. It would be uh, thepowerofwater.net. Fantastic. Well, Drake, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it, and uh, have a great show. And everyone here, Cliff, everyone knows the famous Cliff Jacobson. Cliff, I see your busy site and autographs, and it was just I had to take a number to get a lot, get in to see to talk with you. I understand you have a new book. You want to tell us a little bit about the new book here? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm happy to. Hi, folks. Uh, thanks for listening. Yeah, I have a new book. It's called. Um, uh, yeah. It's, it's called uh, Justin Cody's Race to Survival, and it's kind of different for me because it's a fictional, non-fiction book. Yeah, half fiction, half non-fiction. And the idea began when I woke up one morning and I said, I'm tired of seeing all these gray hairs in the wilderness. How do I get young people involved? And I said, well, young people who like the wilderness will read about it. Trouble is, most kids don't know if they like it or not because their head's stuck in their cell phone. So I decided to try something unusual. I was decided to write a riveting novel, riveting survival novel, that's really a wilderness uh, how-to book. In other words, wilderness skills book. And basically, the story is this kid is screwing up in school, playing on his cell phone, flunking. He has a grandfather who's a wilderness guru. They make a deal with the school where grandpa will take the kid on a month-long canoe trip in Canada and straighten him out. Kid does not want to go. He does not like the wilderness. He does not like canoeing. As all we do is we paddle and camp, camp and paddle, paddle and camp. No fun. So it's either that or summer school. So he decides to go. Well, what happens is Grandpa disappears along the way. The Chicago Mafia is involved. It's the, it's a fictional little story there. And the kid has to survive by himself. And the only thing he has to survive is a day pack filled with some simple things plus a book that his grandfather gave him that has everything in it that he needs to know to survive. The kid hates to read, but he has to. And in the end, well, I won't tell you what happens at the end, but that's kind of the story. Okay, we're here with John Hanson. John, can you explain uh, what we're looking at here? This is a beautiful looking boat. Is this something that you created, you made? This is a boat that I built uh, back in 2008, 2009. It's a typical, traditional style boat from the coast of Maine. It was used for fishing off the shore. It's, um, it's all traditional construction. Uh, white cedar lap strake, which means the, the planks overlap like the side of a house, a, a clappered house. Is this where we get the term in the lumberyard, shiplap? Exactly. Pretty, well, close. And then um, it has a centerboard, and it has a, a rig that's called a sprit rig, which is a very old traditional working boat rig. It's not very efficient aerodynamically. You wouldn't want to race this, but um, it's it, it's easy to work with, easy to store, easy to take down. Um, I noticed we don't have a, what I what do we call a boom that goes across it, and that's what you were talking about, right? Just the sprit, which is on the other side of the sail, which is what makes it simple. There's, there's not a whole bunch of stuff to work with. And um, now, how do we control that sail? If, if we, I see two ropes here, how does that work? Um, by, pull, by pulling on this, I can let it go out on that side or this side, so I control the position of the sail with this line. We're here with Derek and Sean at Paddling Adventures Radio. And uh, guys, what uh, what kind of radio are we looking at here? What do you do here? We're podcasters. Uh, we used to be on an online radio station, but when they closed, we decided we would keep it up as a podcast. Um, 211 episodes four years later, everything paddling related, canoes, kayaks, stand-up paddle boards, rafting, canoe polling, some weird stuff over from Europe, you name it, we paddling it. We're talking about it. That's a lot of episodes. I mean, is this like something you, multiple episodes per week? One episode a week. Every Thursday morning, we put out a new episode. 
Um, yeah, if, if we if we didn't actually have to work for a living at the same time, there would probably be four or five episodes a week. I certainly understand that. Well, Derek, um, so what what kind of uh, adventures are we talking about? With, that uh, uh, is this all domestic or are these international? Oh, this is uh, this is international. We've talked to people from all over the world. Like we've interviewed people from uh, England, uh, the Channel Islands, and and we've had so in amongst all the contacts we've had with uh, people overseas, we've had. A, a couple come over from the Channel Islands, and they, we met with them and chatted with them, and we interviewed them, and so it's we get to talk to people from all walks of life. So now to get in the kayak, and you know, you go out with the kayak, and people, and they're like, oh no, you got to do this, you got to do this, got to, you got to come and learn this. I'll take you out, and I'll teach you this, and we'll go here, and we'll go there, and it's like, this is awesome. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you don't have to figure this out by yourself, and everybody's there to 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 offer a hand and give give hints, tips, and tricks, and. Really cool. It's really cool. And, and I do the same thing. That's exactly what my existence is in this community as well. But yeah, and it's nice to know. And you guys, uh, you have quite a. I mean, where are your listeners from? Do you, you find? I mean, do you everywhere? All around the world. What? Yeah. Aust- Australia. I mean, Canada, and the U.S. are a big. Yeah. Yeah. But Australia, Germany, England, um, South America. We're like twenty. Okay, and we and this distinguished male gentleman, everyone knows the famous Kevin Callan. How are you doing, yes, Kevin? World renowned. World, the happy camper must be happy, happy, happy all the time. Well, Kevin, how are you today? Okay. You having a good show? Okay. I love the show. It's a really good show. All run by volunteers. Very organic. Uh, just love it. Yeah. Can you tell us about what we uh, we see before us here? Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I wrote this book. This, this guy is, is awesome. He's a hoot, man. I swear. I'm very serious, man. Uh, this trip, uh, this book is on a trip I did five or six years ago when I turned 50, my buddy and I. And it's called The Meanest Link. Do not do it. Okay. So it's a trip in Algonquin Park uh, that goes all the way around it, and it connects um, all the uh, Algonquin Outfitters. It's 102 portages, 68 miles of portaging. So what happened is people do it as a race, and my buddy and I thought, well, let's do it not as a race. Let's take three weeks to do it and be the the tortoise, not the hare. Yes. And uh, yeah, it was good. Um, 102 portages, you said? Uh, it's just stupid. It, yeah. I can't even imagine that. I. I, I yeah, I'm glad my buddy's still talking. How, <laughs> how many miles does that uh, equate to? I think it was 420 kilometers. Yeah, yeah. It was cool though. I mean, what else? How many did you wear out a pair of shoes doing all those? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and in theory though too. Like when we're thinking back, like this book is more about about the park and my life at the park and why, what I like about the park and the history of the park and how it's changing and the trip, right? So it's it's a more than just the, the trip. It's almost like a Bill Bryson walk in the woods mixed in with uh, with um, uh, Sigurd Olson, Lonely Land, mixed in with uh, Bill Mason, Powell, Powell, Powell. Okay. Yeah. okay, we're here, Gary. Gary, your Gary's going to operate this uh, this ROC. It's R-O-V. called ROV. I'm sorry, ROV. Remotely operated vehicle. Okay, fantastic. Let's see what's, what's going on here. Explain it, this as we're it watching. Has, uh, this one has four motors on it. It has two motors for forward and backward. If you run one forward and one backward, it turns faster. It has two switches for up and down to take it up and down. Now, right now, I have it set so it's positively buoyant so you can see it better. Normally, you'd have it neutrally buoyant, which means it's just under the water, not floating and not sinking. Kind of like a submarine. Well, like a submarine, except well, that's how submarines are. They're neutrally buoyant. Literally, a diver can move a submarine because they're that balanced. Wow, I had no idea of that. And this is a class that we teach, but it's a, it's a fun course, and engineering is amazing for kids. I had a little girl say, why not try science? It's fun. You get to use what's in your head instead of what's in a book. Makes sense, and doesn't that's it? what makes it fun. But like I say, this is my retirement fund. My wife says, as long as we're not losing money, have fun. That's the trick, isn't when it? When we start losing money, we're going to have to talk. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Gary, for this uh, for this demonstration. It's then. a lot of fun. It really is. And kids learn. It's it's so much fun to see a kid catching on to something in science. And we don't have a lot of that. I mean, th- these days it's mostly in front of video game or in front of the screen right. and, and so the devices. The kid has to use their brain to make it work. And that's really what this is all that's about. That's what it's all about. And yeah, that, so that's much. why I'm having such a ball with you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gary. I appreciate it. Have nice a great day. You, you take care. Thank you.